Moose and Spiel, John. Moose and Spiel. Metroid Prime stuff. And we were thinking about stuff that we can complain about. We just started thinking about TV shows. Oh, man. So, I... I Okay, so you watched the new TV show. That's that's something you really want to talk about, right? Yeah, well, I just started it. It's vinyl. It's done by the people who do Boardwalk Empire, and basically the people who did Sopranos. You know, just along the line, right? So of course, is this a so. Showtime show or HBO? HBO. Okay. Uh, let me see. Vinyl is done by HBO, yeah. Uh, written by Terrence Winter, who was famous Steve for Steve Buscemi Empire. have any part in it? Uh, not yet, but I mean, I only watched the first episode. And, okay. And the funny thing is, the first episode is two hours long, so it's longer than, like, most full seasons of other shows. Oh. It's longer than, like, entire British TV series, let alone the seasons. Uh, but it basically stars, uh, it stars Bobby Cannavale, who was the villain of season three of Boardwalk Empire, Jack Rossetti, and it takes place in the 1970s, and, uh, he's one of those sleazy record company execs who does nothing but uh, drugs and alcohol and everything and tries to get bands to sign with his label. Oh, I think I've heard of this. Yeah, that was a big thing in the 70s, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. they were always lo looking for that new sound. Yeah, oh, this, I didn't even know this. Ray Romano was one of the, one of his dudes. I didn't realize that. He's, he's, Ray Romano was like in, in the pie to, in the first episode all over the place. I didn't even recognize him. Huh. He's like, he's got that recognizable voice, but at the time I didn't even realize it. I'm just looking through the cast list now, but that's Ray Romano. Wow. That's pretty cool. I'm going to have to check this out. Yeah. I haven't watched a, uh, a TV show in quite some time. I've, I've been watching so much anime now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I finally got over Monster. Oh, yeah. yeah have you moved on? To, did you ever start reading 20th Century Boys? I am currently on Volume 2. Oh, good. I've been doing uh, a chapter at night before bed. How do you like Volume One? Uh, volume One was kind of all over the place. Hmm. It was kind of setting the scene, I would say. Um, okay. But Volume Two, like, put it all together, and I'm oh, hooked. Did it? I'm totally hooked. Oh, sweet, good. Yeah, I read like three chapters last night because I had because <laughs> I, I didn't read any in the last few nights. Yeah. And I was like, shit, I got to put this down. What's the last thing that happened that you remember? So, this uh, cop was a week from retirement, and uh, he, had, he's, he was starting to put all these things together. He believes that the friends are going to lead to something huge, and he believes it's already started, and he was going to leave the case in one of the other detectives' hands. So yeah. he was going through all the evidence and everything, and then he was going to be on his way to his grandkid's uh, birthday... Uh, little backstory on how him and his daughter didn't get along, and then the uh, detective says, good luck at your uh, grandson's birthday. Taps him on the, uh, like, kind of, you know, on the back of the shoulder blades there for a sense of achievement, and then the cop coughs up blood, keels over, dies. And then, oh, it, and then it cuts right. to the detective uh, revealing he's part of the friend group. Yeah. Saying he knew too much. Oh. Yeah. So good, yeah. It's it, it. reminds me a lot of Monster. It's coming together. Yeah, like yeah. the pace and all the, that kind the, of stuff. Yeah. I I feel uh, the pace in Monster was better because things happened quicker right away. Yeah. Um. I'm thinking maybe the payoff of this story is going to be much high, much higher. Yeah, it's a cool story. That's, it's, that's what it gets way more complicated than Monster does. That's that's what it's that's what it seems like to me. Um. I really liked in the first volume when all the uh, all the kids got together, you know, like twenty years later for the first time in a while because one of their friends died, and they uh, they got drunk and dug up their own their own uh, little burial thing that they did, and it's like, what's this shit? It's like a nudie mag, a rubber frog, and then the, the uh, a flag with the symbol on it. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't care about that. Only the one character cares. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're only starting to realize they're only they have, most of them are still in the dark. So I'm, I'm I'm very curious to see where it goes. Just try to remember every single character as much as you can, because like they do come back. It does you know. The more you remember from these early chapters, the better. Okay, is that why? I guess that's why they had like all the characters listed on the yeah. very first page of the first volume, and you're yeah. like, I don't know any of these people yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, this morning before work, I watched a film by Makoto Shinkai that okay. I've never seen before. It's uh, The Place Promised in Our Early Days. Okay, I don't know that. 
this thing's amazing. Hmm. Like, it's been a long time since I've seen any of his movies, and I'm gonna have to actually wa rewatch another one because it's been so long. I don't really remember it very well. I do remember that it touched it touched my cockles, touched my heart. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, it touched your cockles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It made me it made me feel feels. Made me realize I have emotions. Oh, <laughs> I hate those movies. Uh, this one was really good. Um, you know, even after the movie, I was like thinking to myself, all of these things uh, came together at the end, and then you you realize while well, the characters don't, what the ramifications of what just happened oh, okay. are. And it's really like I can't spoil this for you. I, I got I have to recommend you watch this. And so, what's it called again? Uh, the place promised in our early days, and it's like a drama kind of. It's, it's a drama. I yeah. would, I would, I would, I would classify it as a drama. It's definitely not a slice of life or anything. It's, um, it's just a story. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's about. So it's it's uh, think of. Japan, and then you're in Japan, and in the distance, uh, you see this just tower, and it goes as high as you can see. Well, one of the ki one of the kids in the in the in the mo in the movie is, or the film, um, has this drive to go to the tower. Hmm. He doesn't know why. He just has this urge, and um, so him and his best friend uh, take up a part-time job. They're getting parts to build a plane so they could eventually fly there. Hmm. But the thing the 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 catch is that. There's possibly a war gonna start. Uh, where that tower is is actually kind of a sovereign nation, and you can't just go there. You have to like fly under the radar. You can't just cross the border. You know, there's, so there's a lot of hidden things to it. You know. Hmm. Um. Well, somewhere along the line, they end up meeting this girl, and uh, she has these dreams and they're kind of like premonitions you could say she's got this kind of precognitive ability but she's not aware of it oh, okay yeah and uh she also has and and she keeps dreaming about the tower so it all kind of molds together in that way well we found a missile expansion i did that's the whole part of the game you gotta you gotta find those things very annoying i don't like it oh yeah because you think 85 would be enough right now it's not. And then you're like, no, because if you want to use a super missile that uses five regular missiles. Oh, does it? Yeah. Huh. So you really only have so much. But it is cool how you like start to inhabit Samus a little better. Like it's not so clunky anymore. It like you actually do feel. Oh you know, yeah. For, you're, as, you're more as, of a ninja now. As the game has gone on, yeah, you're just like, all I have to do is this and this and this and this and this. But the the jumping mechanic is still very much annoying. Right. Because you constantly don't realize that you have that extra step more than you have. Right. And But you can't look down into your feet, so you don't know where exactly you're standing. They also have to, like, figure out a, a nice, easy, intuitive way for characters to not just walk off of cliffs when you're trying to jump. Because there's no way anybody would do that in real life. Right, yeah. Everybody would at least get a, at least a little bit of a jump in. Yeah. Well, with the, with the messed up way the GameCube controller is, they also had to come up with a control scheme that kind of makes sense for the game. Right. That's why it was so difficult at first to get a grasp on it. Hmm. Yeah. But the place promised in our early days. Um, the place promised in our early days. Wow. I'll have to remember to watch that. It's in Japanese, right? Uh, I watched it in English, actually. Oh, yay! English dubs. Yep. I've been watching most of my anime lately, because now I'm in... 2004 and 2005 uh, a lot of it's in German a yeah. lot of it's in English you know the dub's finally good yeah so the place promised in the early days yeah Makoto yeah, Shinkai and basically anything by Makoto Shinkai is really good well you know what it, I'll watch this one if I like it then I'll know to follow him yeah yeah like another one's 5 centimeters per second that's the one I've seen before that huh. one's really good Oh, there's this one, like, uh, I, I saw my friend this weekend because I went camping, and uh, he started listening to a whole bunch of podcasts, like, especially history podcasts that I should start listening to. Oh, God, the podcast kick? 
Well, I mean, there's just so <laughs> much material out there that's so good that I have not really been um, exposed to. Uh, apparently, uh, like it's about something like myths or something. I don't know, like early myths. I don't know. Oh, there's some cool podcasts out there. I mean, just YouTube channels, for example, could be podcasts. Myths and legend. That legends. That's it. You know, what's that? Like just YouTube channels could be podcasts. You oh just yeah. Put YouTube on and. Yeah, there's so much good stuff out there. It's it's a lot of good like you you when it's like what good finding a good fan fiction. You're gonna go through a lot of. Crappy ones, mediocre ones, but then when you find something you actually like, it feels like you hit gold. Yeah. Yeah. Like that kid who found mine, and then said he loved it, but then also didn't understand what... But then d- demonstrated in my conversation with him that he didn't really get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, he still liked it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know what? That's a fan. That's cool. And he enjoyed it. He got something out of it. Yeah, he wants a sequel. When are you yeah. going to make it? <laughs> he wants a sequel including the character that died in the one. <laughs> in the one that, uh, it's easy. Just bring it back. Yeah. Or her back. I don't know. I haven't read it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what they... That's like comic booky, and you never... Yeah. Good Good. Good writers never do that. Yeah. Colin writes, uh, writes a bunch of fanfics. Oh, does he? Yeah. Huh. He, uh... One of his uh, ones that gets the that gets the most feedback is the um, One Piece Kingdom Hearts crossover fan fiction he has writing. Oh, okay, One Piece Kingdom Hearts crossover. Yeah, where where uh, somewhere on the Grand Line, there's an island where it's been separated by like time and space, and it's the Kingdom Hearts universe. <laughs> and the One Piece crew stumbles upon it. See, I, I was thinking about writing one um, based on League of Legends characters because I love the characters in League of Legends. Uh, the setting and the setting is just so undefined because they just haven't given much of a story to League of Legends. So you just take the characters and you make them do anything, really. It's all up to your imagination. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know if I really want to do that. <laughs> uh, I don't like the characters that much that I would like, you know. Well, I loved the characters in Place Promised in our early days. Like each. Oh, okay. So. I noticed with a lot of modern anime today, a lot of the characters are very uh, archetyped. Mm. You know, they they act only this way. Mm. There's and there's hardly any development towards their character other than they realize their feelings for another human being. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, in 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 this movie, uh, each character had their own. Uh, personality, their own trivial, and and it changed as they got older. Hmm. It kind of cuts, you know, months down the line, years down the line, and their personality goes through those same time advances. You know, Hmm. they act this way in junior high because of this reason, and then, you know, now they're in high school, so now they act this way. One kid's, uh, one of the main characters is living in, um... Tokyo, and he and he can't figure out why he wants to be alone all the time, and he's and he's constantly going through these. Uh, Is it because of uh, brainwashing that happened when he was six years old <laughs> in the haunted house? Well, that's that's story. That's the the reason is story that you're just gonna have to because watch. Then then it's like 20th century boys. <laughs> <laughs> when it's like. Oh, it's because of the time when I was up late in the science lab, and uh, that weird ghost caught me and brainwashed me into thinking, yeah. Oh? Well, it, that's not exactly what happened, but that's the type of thing okay. that happens. I, that's in the first volume where the the one kid thought he saw a ghost or something jumps out a two-story window. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, you, you gotta remember all that stuff. Yeah. Don't worry, I have a good memory. <laughs> yeah. For things I show an interest in. <laughs> yeah. I've noticed, that, that's, that, that's one thing about my personality. If I do not have an interest in it... Well, that's most people... They just dismiss information that it, that doesn't really grab them. The, well, that's a good chunk for me. Yeah. It's a, most of my daily life. I do not care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah. Yeah, more of these ghosts. Yay, more ghosts. And what? Yay, early early millennium video games. Well, what I... Fa- so, about these ghosts. Yes, they're connected to these artifacts in some way that we're still learning but let's say i exit this room like i've killed them now exit and i go shit i guess i forgot to do something there i go right back in they're back 
Yeah, that's annoying. It's respawning enemies. Like, instantaneous. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. I don't, I don't, I don't, re I didn't really, like, like, care for that. But considering how they don't really hurt you. Well, once you figure out how to kill, like, that first battle with them, I was like, I don't know what to do. But then once I figure it out, I'm like, okay, now, that, now they're not really any issue. It's a good, so that's a sign of good game mechanics, and N Nintendo's always been, always had, like, the best kind of in-game mechanics. Yeah. Just a short topic, I went to ANC Games, and, um, I was kind of looking at the N64 games. Yeah. You know, just browsing there, and, uh, guy asked me, do you have a Nintendo 64? I'm like, yeah. He goes, what do you think of it? I was like, it's, it's alright, you know, it's not one of my favorite consoles by far. It's probably one of my least favorite, actually. Yeah. Just because it, it, I, I think, and the guy next to me, the the other guy, he was he was saying, well, what's wrong? They have so many good games. I'm like, I didn't say that there weren't many good games for it. I'm saying that everybody's gonna have these same titles, and that's it. Whoa, you have to go in the, you have to go in a ball like that. Yeah, so he bowl, he uh, he bowls you. Really? <laughs> Whoa. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, there are things like that in the game. It's like, whoa, that's awesome. Um, now it shoots you out like a pinball machine? But, like, I guarantee every game, every N64 game I have, another N64 uh, enthusiast is going to have the exact same games. There's not going to be like, oh, oh my god, you should totally play this game. Oh, I've never heard of this one. Hmm. You know, all the Sega consoles are pretty much like, wow, you know, if you like this game, you can get this one. Hmm. It's just what I, it's just what I think about it. So, yeah, yeah. So, N sixty four, the Golden Eye Machine. This is where this one's coming to an end. Okay, goodbye. Yeah.